Tell me when. One, two, three, two, one, two, where? Hey, hi, hey. Okay, hello everyone. Arigato, thank you very much for joining us inside this time. We move from the beautiful Texas heat of 96 degrees into this gorgeous, cool space of uh, 92. No, I'm kidding. Of uh, my AC unit <laughs> kitchen. Welcome, and first of all, thank you very, very, very much for uh, joining us in this class. It has been the biggest so far. Uh, we sold out in terms of bags, in terms of these bags that I'm going to show you in a minute. This says Buon Appetito. I think I broke the eggs. By doing that, I broke the eggs. No. <clears throat> so, sold out. Um, it was great, it was magic. You guys are fantastic. I love for you to follow me, obviously, every two weeks in this uh, little uh, let's uh, cook uh, real, real Italian recipes. And we said, with that said, I'm gonna start by. Oh, well, they took the pasta out, that beautiful garofalo pasta from Gragnano. Then you probably found the eggs. This recipe is for two to three people, so four eggs is okay. Then we have, oh, we have the cheese, the, the pecorino, the guanciale, and, uh, uh oh, uh, where's the cream? Uh oh, we forgot to put the cream in the, in the bags. Nah, nah, nah! <laughs> Just kidding! There is no cream in the in the carbonara, and I'm gonna tell you now, and I'm gonna sign it. Every time you go to an Italian place, an Italian place, and you see a carbonara with cream, you go ahead and tell them, Chef Daniele Puleo told me that there is no carbonara in the, <laughs> there is no cream in the carbonara. Do it, please. There is none, right? So, having said that, we're going extremely slow today because later on I have a little surprise for you I'm gonna take you somewhere where nobody has been before and uh, where everybody has been asking he said well we want to see I'm going to show you tonight so anyway having said that we're gonna start very slowly with uh, what we need to cook tonight. That's what we need. So we need a pot. Come on, woman, you wanna follow me? We need a pot with water for the pasta. The fire is off, there's no fire yet. And then we need a pan for the guanciale. I chose a 12 inch non-stick pan. You can use a 10 inch, whatever you got, no problem. Does it have to be non-stick? Probably not, you know, but I'd rather use the non-stick. Then we need your utensil, obviously, and we need the, your gorgeous knife, and uh, you need your little whip, because we're gonna have to whip uh, the, the little eggs, egg yolk, and, uh, and uh, pecorino cheese. By the way, one thing that we also need is a little cheese gravy, okay? So we leave everything over here. So let's start doing a little bit of prep, and if you follow me, I already started cutting the, the guanciale. Uh, so what do you want to do first, if you, if you follow me for a second, is get the guanciale that has been provided to you. You see where there is a lot of spices over here, the guanciale obviously is cured. One side has the, the you can see the meat a little more. The guanciale is the chick of the, of the pork. And the top has got a lot of spices. So, Get one of those uh, uh, owls, go to your uh, uh, kitchen sink, and start cleaning up the guanciale and removing most of the, of the spices, okay? So basically, see, I clean up most of it. What I have left is a little bit of pepper, which is okay, because I'm going to need it. Um, guanciale is mostly fat, okay? So don't get worried about, uh, this is actually a small guanciale. In Italy they get really big. It's actually, especially if you get the guanciale, the cinta, cinta senese, which is a, 
a special type of pig from, uh, from Vienna in Tuscany. Those can get big chicks of, uh, um, of uh, one child, big cats of meat. So, mostly fat, that's all we need is the fat. The fat is extremely important for the carbonara. So, what I was doing is, I was slicing this, and I want you to do it with me, camera woman, if you look at what I do. I want you to slice the guanciale that you have. Now, my piece is obviously bigger than yours, but I'm not gonna use the whole thing, because for this recipe, for two, three people, we need the, only five, six ounces of guanciale. So once I slice it, and that should probably be it, okay, of what you're gonna end up with. So you wanna do thick slices, and then you want to do slices like this. So this is what we're looking for, more or less, okay? This kind of length. I'm going to go slow, and I'm going to wait for you. Someone so, asked if they said they didn't get a shallot. Is a red onion okay? For what? They said they didn't get a shallot. Is a red onion okay? There's no shallots here. No shallots. Nope. The uh, carbonara is no onion, no shallots, no... Um, uh, no garlic, nothing. It doesn't have any of them. So, once we have these babies all done, and uh, you should have this, you know, at this point, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna transfer that to my pan when my pan is cold, okay? And I do that for a very simple reason, because if I do it when it's cold, it will release more fat. If I do it when it's hot, it will freeze the fat. But at this point, the carbonara, because it needs the fat, as you can see, I put no oil, no butter, nothing at all. And if I have a thick piece like this, I kind of hit the even smaller, okay? No fat, no oil, that is it. Because the fat, I mean, no butter, no oil, because the fat will come out from the one child. So once I have the guanciale here, I will start on medium, and I'm gonna start making it uh, what I call uh, sweat. I'm gonna make it sweat. Okay, that's what I that's what I call it. So, boom. Now, while this is sweating a little bit, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history of the guanciale. Uh, now I'm gonna get a thousand messages tomorrow. I have a question really quick. Yes. Someone's asking, they have a vegan version, how, when and how to cut a zucchini. Uh, okay, cut the zucchini, you know what? I don't have a zucchini. Okay, cut the zucchini in small dice, okay? Um, if you give me, if you give me uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes, after we will do to this, I'll show you the zucchini one, okay? So don't go away. I was gonna tell you, um, Oh, I need zucchini. If I don't pick it up. Uh, the story of the carbonara. So, carbonara, um, because everybody, you know, everybody loves it, and it's, uh, you know, it makes sense. Carbonara is uh, uh, actually an American recipe, if you want to know. Actually, it's an Italian recipe, but it's been created by Americans. The American soldiers overseas in Italy, they were having this wonderful breakfast that we all have with uh, eggs and uh, egg, okay? So they were having this breakfast every morning. The smell was incredible. So some of the Italian chefs, you know, from the smell, you know, they created the carbonara, except they changed the bacon for the guanciale, but uh, then the egg beaten is the same and all the stuff. So we have to give credit to the Americans for making carbonara, yes. So we have a question. We're cooking the meat and vegetarian at the same time. Can we have a few prep instructions for the zucchini? So yes. I guess maybe like a time time frame when to start the zucchini as opposed you to the meat. You cut the zucchini in four. Cut them along the line. Unfortunately, they're gonna they're gonna get my zucchini. I forgot to, to pick it up. So cut along the line, and then cut again along the line. So you do four equal pieces for the zucchini. So then what you do is you remove the seeds. Okay, and you cut it in pieces, about this big, okay? So cut it in pieces and prep it. Leave it on, leave it on the side, and I'm gonna show you in five minutes how it's done. Because we have time with this. We have time with the, with the uh, guanciale. The guanciale needs uh, 
He's a little bit of fat because he has to release. He has to release all the fat. So we have time. And I have time to show you that. The, the one with zucchini will, will pretty, pretty, pretty much go fast. So we're going to start with this one in the meantime. Again, let's go ahead and start the water. Medium low because we're gonna we're gonna give us the time to to get uh, on this and uh, before I move on, I don't know if you guys had the mine or not, but I'm gonna have some more of the my white. Any other questions so far? Uh, can you add the zucchini and the meats? You can if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. You can create your own carbonara the way you want. Um, well, it, it won't be called carbonara anymore, but you can do carbonara with zucchini. You know, it's a, you can create your own recipe. Um, I am just giving you the real thing, and uh, hopefully you follow my direction. And whichever Italian restaurant you're gonna go to, when they have a cream in the carbonara, please tell them not to do that. I appreciate it. So anyway, Having said that, I'm gonna help myself tonight with some black pepper. And this baby is being donated to me by the Bumpy. Uh, thank you, Christy Evans from Bumpy. Um, and there's a reason why they did this, because uh, in two weeks, next class will be uh, Tuscany. And uh, with the wines from Tuscany, obviously the wines from Bumpy. And uh, it's going to be, ta -ta -la, ta -ta 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 -la. I'm going to teach you how to make porchetta. Okay? So here I said it. You remember, everybody wants to know how to make porchetta. This guy will teach you in two weeks. Someone's asking to repeat the cutting instructions on the zucchini. Absolutely. Get the whole zucchini, cut it in half. Okay? Then the half, another half. So now you're going to have four pieces of zucchini. Go along and get remove all the seeds. Once you got the, the seeds removed, just cut the zucchini. About, uh, I would say, a quarter of an inch each, each piece, okay? And set it on the side. That's not gonna take too long uh, for me to show it to you, okay? Just set it on the side. Now this, first of all, the smell is incredible. And, and obviously my dogs uh, are not cooperating. This is what I go to. This is what it's called. Uh, this is what I call uh, uh, a long way of having <laughs> Oh, isn't it great about lies? Hi, girls! <laughs> so anyway, that's it. Uh, they're asking no hey. peeling. Do you peel the zucchini? No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Don't peel it. Okay. I lower. And did the meat go in the pan with a little olive oil? No. No olive oil, no cream. We got, I mean, uh, no butter. We're going to wait a few more minutes. If I see that the guanciale is cooking, because guanciale is a different types of guanciale. There is a guanciale that is more fat, guanciale that is less fat, guanciale that is uh, um, uh, aged a little bit longer, and a guanciale that is a little bit uh, less aged. So what, what we get want to wait for is for the guanciale to release the fat. We see how much fat the guanciale release. If it's not enough, instead of adding oil, I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Okay, so every time a recipe like this needs help, I'm gonna help it with butter. Okay, butter will cook slower than, than, uh, than oil. So that will give me a chance to control the heat in the guanciale, which right now is actually going pretty good. You know, if you see, you see the fat? You see the fat? Okay. So it's releasing the fat pretty good. Uh, I got the, I got it at a, a, a low heat right now. And then is the boiling water, is it gonna be for the pasta? The boil, we have to wait until it boils. Uh, we don't put pasta in the, in the pot unless the water is boiling. The reason why is because it's going to stick. Uh, so poor mailman, that was the reason why. 
the dogs were <laughs> barking. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's some music that I hear every single day. Anyway, uh, no, we'll wait for the water to, for the water to boil. I haven't put any salt right now. No salt at all. The guanciale is already a little salty. But Someone then, asked where you can get more of the guanciale. Absolutely, we, I do have more at the store. Yes, I do have more guanciale. So, if by any chance I want the guanciale to dry up uh, uh, faster, I can add the salt, but I don't want to do that. You know, I want the guanciale to cook slow because I want the fat to be released. Um, Professional the, opinion on salting the pasta water? Not yet, not yet. I always salt the pasta water um, about uh, three minutes after, after I put the pasta in. Right. So I don't, I don't want to salt the pasta water. What I do on the pasta water is, and uh, this is just a, a little advice that I give you, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sound too, too nuts, is uh, this is a laurel leaf. I just put a laurel leaf in there because uh, the pasta water sometimes is a little heavy, you know, um, and uh, what I'm trying to do in this case is uh, to make it a little bit not sweeter, more aromatic. Uh, and how far are you re uh, releasing or reducing the fat? Uh, the fat is still, you're going to see it at the pan. You see, you're going to see it in the pan. So the one chocolate doesn't have to get crispy, but it has to cook. So we're going to wait a little longer for this to be okay. All right? I'm going to show you how much fat is going to release. Um, so anyway, I was going to say two weeks from now, Banffy Wines, Porchetta. You're gonna learn how to make Porchetta and you will never look back after that, right? Questions? Someone said, did you freeze, but I'm... Did I freeze? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Beth. I didn't freeze, no. <laughs> uh, and then what kind of leaf did you put into the boiling water? Water leaf. Laurel leaf. The laurel leaf is just to, you know, give a little bit of aromatics to the water because sometimes it, it's uh, too much uh, calcareous. Is it is it an English word? Calcar. Well, Tartar. It's, it's uh, too much of the um, water is heavy, you know, and it tastes bitter sometimes. So when I put the laurel leaves, you know, I give a little bit of aromatics and that bitterness goes away. Can you use a basil leaf instead? No. No. It has to be a laurel leaf. Uh, you can use the stems of the parsley if you want to, since uh, we don't use uh, the stems and we throw them away. No, you can use those, but no. You can you spell them. the kind of leaf? A lot of people are asking what kind of leaf. Do you can know you how to spell, spell laurel leaf? Laurel? Yeah. Like L-A-U-R-E-L? Yeah. Laurel? Like laurel? the name? Uh, I don't know. Is it like the name? Laurel? <laughs> laurel leaf. Uh, alloro. In Italian it's alloro. A-L-L-O-R-O. Alloro. If you can just uh, Google Translate that one, it will give you the name of the laurel leaf. Uh, or some people call it bay leaf, which is very similar. Okay, someone asked that. Can you? Oh, they said basil leaf, not bay leaf. No, no. Basil, no. Basil. Can you add oregano? No. Oregano cannot be added to the water. Uh, try bay leaf, laurel leaf. Uh, that's, that's the best thing. Anyway, um, having said that, Guanciale, it's sweating, as you can see, as much as possible, okay? We have a pretty good amount of, of fat, okay? And we're going to start with the zucchini, okay? So, like I said, top and bottom, goes away. Okay? And you just used one leaf in the water, right? Yes, only one leaf. So what I said was, cut it in half over here. Cut it in half. And cut it in half. Now I have to tell you, this one looks pretty clean. It doesn't have too many seeds. Come on, can you give 10 minutes to run? 10 minutes. This one? If it's got too much seeds, that's what you do. You just remove them like this. 
I'm going to do it in the other one so you can see it. Because we don't need the, the seeds. The seeds will bring a little bit of bitterness, so we don't want to use them. Okay? Okay, here we go. And then after I do this, see if, if you have a thick piece like this, camera woman, let me show you this. If you have a thick piece like this, what you do is you cut in the middle and you make smaller pieces. And boom, this is what we're looking for. Okay? Okay. All right, these are the pieces. Oops. That's it, that's what we're looking for. Yes? Now from this, we're gonna transfer it. I'm gonna move that pan real quick. I'm going to show you extra virgin olive oil. Can you ask people if the service is okay? Someone was saying that it was cutting out. I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you ask people if the service is okay? The service, I think the... Oh, okay. is the service okay? I think, I think it's not frozen, frozen anymore. Is it? Okay. You sure? Right, this is what we're looking for. That's it. This is the thickness, okay? A little bit of oil in the pan, not that much. And then and now this one, let's cook medium low and let's let it go. Now, in the meantime, as we do this, because we have time, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the surprise, okay? We are going to connect with uh, my boy, Ryan Olmos, uh, uh, in his farm, because we want to show you a little bit of what's growing in the Chipo de Vino. Uh, all the vegetables and all that stuff and all that beautiful stuff that he's making out there and he's going to show you how to make that wonderful salad that, uh, that you purchased. Uh, let's wait until uh, it comes along. We're, we're trying to connect with him. Trying we to got, We had a couple of questions. Yes. A lot more liquid uh, fat in our pan. What should we do? You got more liquid? If you have more liquid in the pan, you're lucky. All right. The guanciale is doing great. Anybody tell me how your guanciale is doing? Yes? No? Yes? The one child is doing good? They like the, they, the meat's off the hook. Or off the heat. Is the meat off the heat? No. No, no, no. Absolutely okay. not. I still have the, the, the heat on it. Put a little bit of salt in the zucchini. Uh, someone asked if the meat was still cooking? Yeah, the meat is still cooking. Very, very well. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is carbonara because it's like uh, carbon. Okay. This is what we have in the zucchini in the meantime. Okay. Pepper in here. Okay, you got Ryan's garden. What's that? Ryan is logged in. All right. So let me put this on low and then we get back to this. Uh, in the meantime, Let's go to Ryan's farm. 
Well, well someone's what? asking really quick, do they cook it to crispy? What? The meat, I think. The meat? No, it doesn't have to be too crispy. And it will not get too crispy. If you put it on low, you will not get there. So right now, it's just cooking very, very slow, okay? If you see they release plenty of fat, you want to do what I do. Shut it off and let them wait, okay? In the meantime, we're going to get this, uh, this puff going. Okay. Let's let the zucchini cook on minimum, and uh, let's get Ryan uh, to tell us a little bit what's going on in that farm. Ciao, hey. Daniele. How are you doing? Thomas. Great video hey. so far. How are you? Wonderful. It's a little hot out here, so excuse the sweat, but... Uh, <laughs> Is it hot or what? Yes, absolutely. We had, a, had a great time. Us. What can you show us in the farm, Ryan? We're going gonna, gonna to walk around a little bit. So sometimes people say, you know, do you guys really have a farm? Are you guys really organic? <laughs> can you please show us how organic we are? Absolutely. So let me flip the camera around. And um, we're here now to just show you a little bit about what we're doing, all the margarita pizzas, there's all your basil there. There's my beautiful wife in the background. Whoa. So the, the greens that we're about to do in a little bit came from here. These are mustard greens. And if you notice down half of the row has already been trimmed, that was for all the kits. We trimmed about 30 feet for all of the, the kits that uh, we did. It was very successful. I do thank you everybody that bought a salad. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, here's a couple other things that are coming up. We have about six varieties of heirloom tomatoes. Okay. They'll be coming up pretty soon. And we're just walking down the rows now and uh, see a little bit of uh, what we got going on. Here's some more of the greens that we did last week. Um, come around here, we have coming up uh, carrots, celery, and lemongrass. Then we have a little little fun with some uh, eggplants. Goji berry coming along pretty nice. And then um, we have a little fun here coming up here, coming towards the winter. We've already planted in this bed here, four foot by eight foot, a bunch of broccoli rob. Daniele wanted to do a pasta, so we ended up putting some broccoli rob in. So we have a bunch of broccoli rob in here. And we have a ton of Roman zucchini coming in. So that's coming up soon. This is the Roman zucchini. So all these zucchini here. If you're looking down here. There you go. There they are with the flowers still attached. Looks great, Ryan. My God. So we're having a lot of fun here. Um, if you notice the empty rows here, those are some new rows that are going to go in. We have a purple okra. Uh, kale that's going to go over the winter, uh, quite a few Roma tomatoes that are variegated, and we're going to have fun with all that. Uh, I believe we have a couple other things yet. I haven't decided on collard greens or some melons or watermelons. that will be a late fall harvest, but uh, we'll talk about that more with Daniele and figure out what kind of menu items we can create. I love it, man. Listen, I see a table set up over there. Are you going to show us something? Yes, I'm going to show you the salad that we created. I'm going to hand the phone over to my lovely wife, and she's going to video me. Yes. All right. Tell the people how to make the salad. Yes. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to be the only one. Go for it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. So, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Am I in the shadow? I'm trying, trying to keep cool one way or another. But um, everybody uh, that bought a salad. Family with you? Uh, Shiles around here somewhere. He's probably in the pool. <laughs> I don't see him. I think he's he's done for today. Cam <laughs> says to bring him some blossoms. Uh, someone said nice dance moves. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cam right. says for you to bring him some blossoms. You got it. <laughs> so, what we have here, here's the kit that, that we all purchased here, which is uh, the mustard greens. I've already done the favor. These are the mustard greens, but it's been so hot. I pulled them, but they've already wilted a little bit. With mustard greens, you want to pull that stem out. That stem okay, is, Ryan, a, is pretty bitter sure and pretty spicy. Slow. Make sure so, you go slow because people have to follow you. Sure. Okay, so here's the greens. Here's the three different ingredients. It's a very, very, very simple salad. Um, 
kind of took this recipe and expanded on it from another friend of mine. Um, the idea here, just like with Italian cooking, everything is very simple, just with good, clean, fresh ingredients. So the greens go in a mixing bowl, and everybody that got the greens got a pair of gloves, and you're going to see why. So I put my gloves on, and the dressing is a very simple dressing. It is anchovy, salt, pepper, and extra virgin olive oil with a little bit of lemon zest. So all we're going to do is we're going to pour that into the container with the greens. Now, this is the most important part. That dressing has to be really, like, rubbed into the salad. you got to squeeze those greens. The idea is you're going to get that, those greens to release some of their liquid, and that's going to create a little more dressing. So that squeezing will also get the spiciness away from the mustard greens, so it'll calm it down a little bit. So now that I've squeezed them, see that? They're now a little bit translucent and almost look a little bruised. But that's all you got to do is squeeze that lettuce. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to put, you know, half in the little bowl. You know, just a little salad. Put half in the other little bowl. Okay, now done with the gloves, and the rest is going to be garnished. So we have some uh, toasted sliced almonds. We're going to pour on top. More almonds on top. And a little bit of shaved Parmesan. If you like, salt and pepper if you'd like. I think it's just fine the way it is, but if you like a little salt and pepper, feel free. That's pretty much it. Very simple, little light, clean, easy salad with the uh, Green Wave mustard greens. Ryan, wait, wait, it, the salad looks fantastic, and I tasted it, and it's really amazing. And uh, I mean, uh, Christina told me it's one of the best salad you had, she had a head, she had a head. Uh, when do you think it's going to be available in you know, production where people can purchase it at Chipo Divino? So we'll have, as of uh, tomorrow, we'll start bringing in probably about five to ten salads a day, and they'll be available in the cold case. Um, that should go through the winter. It's a very cold, hardy vegetable, we, so the, these greens will go through the winter. As long as I take care of them, they will regrow. Um, we do have covers, so hopefully these two rows, if the demand is enough, we'll plant more. Um, as you can see, I have some. I have a planter, a seed planter here um, that – I'm getting ready to throw some more seed down already. So we'll be prepared. If, if you all think you like it, if you send some messages at Chibo Divino and uh, let us know what you think, we'll put more seed down and put some more vegetables going. It can't, it can't get any fresher than that. The, nope. the place looks gorgeous, but now we want to see something beautiful. We want to see Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Michelle right Hi. here. Hi. Oh, <laughs> Where is she? I don't see her. There she is. <laughs> There's the beautiful wife. Yeah. I still don't see her. Oh, oh you didn't see her? No. There we go. Hi, hey. Hey, Hi. There we go. <laughs> ciao. Ciao, ciao. I miss y'all. Bye, guys. We love you. Thank you very much, Ryan. Looks love great. You. Keep going, my Thank friend. you so much. We're going to continue Thank watching. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy the show, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, 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 right. ciao, <laughs> ciao, <laughs> ciao. Brian, perfect timing. 20 minutes, let's see 35, I think it'll be 20 minutes. Okay, let's pump a little bit of the fire on the water, okay? Look at this. So now, this is as much as you want to go with, uh, with the zucchini. They have to cook slowly, okay? What am I going to show you next, right, with the guanciale? is exactly what you have to do with the zucchini, okay? So once the zucchini cooks a little bit, you can see that it's a little cooked, you see that, okay? From this point on, you do the same thing that I'm gonna show you with the one child, okay? And by the way, if you have any questions or if you wanna do, if you wanna have the recipe of uh, step-by-step, -step, 
send us an email. The recipe is done. We'll send it to you. All right? So let's go back to the one challenge. This baby is already pretty much spitting all the, all the uh, fat. Water is almost boiling. At this point, since uh, we have a very little time, we're going to go ahead and... Excuse the noise, please. And... Uh, I'm not going to try it. It's the one that uh, is buried. Someone said I have a uh, uh, a lot of liquid fat. What do I do? No, no, no. Keep it. Keep it. Oh, my God. Beautiful. No, 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 no. Keep the liquid fat. Whatever fat you have in the pan is going to help later. We'll see. Lisa keeps eating all the meat. What's that? Lisa keeps eating all the meat. Is he Lisa keeps eating the meat. Oh, no. Lisa, come on. Man. And then someone said, should the zucchini have brown? Ours is cooked, but not brown. They're cooked either way. They don't have to be brown. Brown doesn't mean brown. So as long as they're cooked, give them about 15 minutes, okay? I didn't lower it. As long as they spill a little bit of the water, they're going to be okay. Oh, Liz says you need a YouTube channel. You have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody, please tell me if you have the, past, the water boiling before I put the pasta in. Tell me, does everybody have the water, the water boiling? Everyone? Everyone, hello? What? Anybody responding? Water boiling? They're eating the meat. Stop eating the meat. <laughs> Is the water boiling? Not yet, not yet. Water's not boiling. See, I, I can smell the laurel. Not boiling. Water's not boiling. Pump it, pump it up, cover it. Whatever you can Got do. a couple of yeses. Okay, a couple of yeses. So water has to be like this. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. okay. Yes, water boiling, pasta in the middle, pasta out, that's it. Push it in, the way the fire will burn the How much pasta are we making? Well, um, don't put the whole package, put three quarter of it, three quarter of package. Boil it. <laughs> if you put the whole package, it's okay. You can save the rest, okay? And boiling. Oh, good, good. Dump it. Dump the spaghetti inside. So, slowly push all the spaghetti in there. From now to the time we put it over here, we got eight minutes. Okay, so set your watch. I hope you have a Swiss watch. So set your watch. There we go. All the pasta is in. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Move it a little bit. Don't go too nuts. I just want to make sure that the pasta doesn't stick, which it shouldn't because the water is boiling. If the water wouldn't be boiling, then it would stick probably. There we go. This is it. I put no salt in there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so now at this point, since everybody's asking me, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. What do you not that much, just put a teaspoon, just a teaspoon. So what the salt is going to do is going to accelerate the boiling of the water. So bada bing, bada bing. Okay, 647. Teresa I, Dwayne gets a hi. Teresa who? Teresa Chiba, Teresa. I don't know any Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. <laughs> Our life wouldn't be the same without Teresa. And I want to say hi to everybody. I want to say hi to Sadina and beautiful Isabella. I want to say hi to Ellen and uh, Alicia. I want to say hi to Vince, my friend Vince Mon. You know, close to Liz. Liz. Did you salt the water uh, before they put the pasta Brandon in or after? And Lisa. Did you salt the, the salt the water before or after the pasta? No, after. After. Did Hobie's? Who are they? Mr. and Mrs. Jacoby, Julian Rob. All right. Pasta is doing great. Uh, can, please, can you please let me know if everybody's got the pasta into the water before I move on? Because I can slow down. Come along. Can you see that? Can you see all the fat? Can you see all the fat? 
Good will hunting. All right. Off. Follow me. Here's what we do now. Get the eggs. Eggs. Egg number one. Are you with me? Boom. Break it. Boom. Oops. Lost it. Pick it up. Boom. Egg yolk. Egg number two. Boom. Boom. Slow down a little. Slow yolk. Egg. I am. I am slow now. Egg number three. Some Boom. Second. Boom. I'm just picking up the yolk. Then I can slow down. No problem. Over there. Egg number four. Sadira, you have to do egg number five. I know that. Can you repeat about the salt in the water with the spaghetti? After a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes. All right. Here we go. Boom. Yes? Yes. Um, what we want to do on this baby is once you got the eggs in there, crack a little fresh pepper. That's it. And then get your uh, pecorino that's been provided. So this is yolks only, right? Oh, yolks only. No whites. Why no white? Because if I put the white, it's going to be a frittata. And we don't wear an omelette. We're not doing an omelette. We're doing a carbonara. So, bada boom, bada bing. Okay, have you noticed I put no salt? You want the white? The pecorino has already got salt. So, do this. Start mixing it. And here is the secret. Please, I'm not sure the secret. You scoop the yell, get a little bit of the water from the pasta, dump it in there. Okay? And then keep mixing. Mix, mix, mix. Okay. You know, what we're trying to reach is this. You see that? Okay, now you need to slow down this a little bit and, and repeat a little bit. No worries. Get the egg yolk. Put it in a, in a, in a little bowl. A little bit of cracked pepper. The pecorino. Half of what, I, what has been provided to you. Half. Greater than that. Let me show you. I'm gonna put a little more, okay? How much cheese? Oh, half. Half of the cheese that has been provided. The rest will go on top of the carbonara once we play it, okay? Mix it. Put a little bit, a little bit of the pasta water, okay? Look at that, not that much. You see, a little bit. Boom. And keep mixing. And you're using only the yolk, right? Only the yolk. Okay, we want to get to this point. All right, yes. Let it sit. That's all we did. That's all we do. That's it. We don't do anything else. That's all we do. Just control the pasta. Beautiful. I got about three more minutes before the pasta is out. Make sure you get the creaminess of the, okay. Is it too liquid? If it is, if it's too liquid, all you have to do is put a little bit more pecorino. Of the piece that's been provided to you, this is what I have left. And this is going to be on top of the carbonara when the carbonara, when the carbonara is done and plated. it. Please note. Is there any parsley here? No. You want to put some herbs? Fresh mint is what I suggest. Actually, what I recommend fresh mint is if you do the carbonara with the with the uh, zucchini. There, you can put a little bit of fresh mint. You know, it makes it a little bit fresher, a little bit. This is going to smell great. Okay? Do you see what happens here? You see what I got? Okay, this is a little cream that I'm going to need for the carbonara because then... There is another secret for Catroia Pitana. Finally grated with the cheese or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Just grate it. No, it doesn't matter. All right. So, here's what we have. Pasta off. I like to leave the pasta um, in the water for one minute before, before I pull it up. Just because I want the pasta to finish it. It's going to be al dente. If you leave it on uh, just one minute swimming in there. In the meantime, 
something extremely important, extremely important. Uh, show us how it looks, the consistency. The consistency of the... See that? Because this has to do the cremina. We call it cremina in Italian. You know, which is the little cream that makes the carbonara without the heavy cream, please. Okay? Thank you. So at this point, this will be poured in the pasta with the zucchini, you know, if you want the vegetarian one. Uh, yeah, put some fresh mint. You'll see that it's going to change your life. Otherwise, in this, you know, for this, if you notice, omelet, and I don't want to do that. I have to create a little bit of cream, not an omelet. So the little the baba bean that I use, I'm going to leave it in there because if I need more water, I want to be able to do it. So How many minutes on the pasta? Eight minutes. And do you use all the cheese? No, half of it. Because the other half is going to be on top of the carbonara. So you can get the pasta now and put it in there. Don't worry about the water that goes in there. All right, and then we can just mix it. Oh, by the way, you have to be proud. Okay, they're going to take on the video froze, so okay. they didn't get to see it. Go back to it, we'll do the yolks. That's usually the yolks. Look, I did it before. Okay, I transferred the pasta into the guanciale. You see that? Yes. Now pasta and guanciale are together. I'm keeping the pasta water because I might need it. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the pan off the fire. Because if I leave the pan out there, this is still hot, I'm going to make a frittata. That's not what I want to do. So at this point, once I have this, I'm just going to pour it over here. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you. Because unfortunately it froze. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go backwards because you had the meat in the pan. Okay. Now I put the pasta with the meat and then I put the mix of the eggs and pecorino together. I'm looking at it, it's a little tight, so I'm gonna put a little bit of water from the pasta. Just a little bit, and I keep on doing what I was doing. Boom, 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 boom. Can you hear that noise? Can you hear that noise? That's the noise. That's the perfect noise for the carbonara. Okay. You want to see what I'm looking at? Come on, woman. You see that? You see that little cream? This is what we're looking for. Okay? Because the pain. Look at that. Did you leave all the fat a, in the pan? Yes, absolutely. That's what makes the deal. That's what that makes a difference. Okay? All right. Off the fire. The pan is warm, but it's not piping hot. So off the fire. So at this point, what I do is I get a plate. Okay, and I played it. I don't want to go too much. Okay. And on top, guess what? I'm gonna do a little bit more pecorino. Oh gosh, yes. 
Oh, yes. And a little more. Um, Liz said, I have the noodles on top of the zucchini. Uh, please repeat where the eggs go. The eggs go, once you have the zucchini and the pasta together and you mix everything up, move it out of the fire, then put the eggs mixture with the pecorino. And just move it and move it and move it. If you need to, because it dries up and you see drying up, just add a little bit of pasta water at a time. You're supposed to have this. Can you see this? The little cream, okay? There is no cream in the carbonara. You create the cream with egg yolk and pecorino. So, boom! Carbonara. We've got about three, four minutes. Let's get more questions. Questions, please. Make sure all the vegetarian. Yes, vegetarians, you have questions? Vegetarians, no. Anyone? So we want to get a picture to hashtag Chibarina. Yes, please do. And I want to remind you, in two weeks, Bumpy Wines, Porchetta. How to make the perfect porchetta. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, this is uh, one of the most famous uh, Italian recipes created by American soldiers. Um, my favorite place in Rome is called Da Francesco. And uh, I have to tell you, it's probably the best carbonara I've ever had. You can change the pasta if you like. Instead of spaghetti, you can use penne or mezze maniche, which is the half of rigatoni. Um, in Rome, most of the restaurants make tonnarelli. Tonnarelli are fresh pasta, fresh noodles. They're like square spaghetti. You know, they're spaghetti, but if you look on the side, they're a little bit square. You know, they're very really good. Uh, where does the zucchini go? The zucchini goes in the mix. You have to saute everything with the pasta. So you do the same thing that I showed you with the uh, with, uh, carbonara. And then, boom, you put the, the zucchini instead of the flat shot. No, I gotta taste this baby. Susan says, thank you. They're going to eat now. TX Event says it's delicious. <laughs> no, no, no. Carbonara with no cream, please, no cream. This is amazing. Someone's asking, where's the zucchini? That was a, it's a different recipe. Yeah, the zucchini recipe is the other recipe for Codinci. The zucchini was like, a, let's imagine this is the guanciale. You mix the pasta to it, and then you put the mix of uh, um, egg yolk and uh, pecorino. And you mix it the same way that we did the regular carbonara. If it looks a little dry, just put a little bit of pasta water, keep mixing it, and you're gonna have the same result, but instead of the guanciale, you have the zucchini. And that's the vegetarian carbonara. Liz, yes? Liz, you got it? Where's Liz? I don't know. Good. Very good. Well, I wanna thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please, you know, email us. I got to eat this. This is amazing. <laughs> it came out really good. So I'll see you in two weeks. Um, Bumpy wines and uh, uh, porchetta. Liz said you thank you. It's amazing. Thank you. Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. From you, it's a great compliment. I love you. Thank you all very much. See you in two weeks. Ciao. Grazie. It's very, very slow, okay? We're searching for the meat to release the fat. That's it. Okay? So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna wait for the zucchini. If you like to, put a little bit of salt in the zucchini. Alexander, you wanna come closer? Uh, someone asked if the meat was still cooking. Yeah, the meat is still cooking very, very well. 
carbonara because it's like uh, carbon. You know, it's very uh, okay. Here's what we have in the zucchini in the meantime. Okay. Pepper in here. What's that? All right. So let me put this on low, and then we get back to this. Um, in the meantime, let's go to Ryan's farm. Well, and someone's asking really quick: Do they cook it to crispy? What? The meat. The meat? No, it doesn't have to be too crispy, and it will not get too crispy. If you put it on low, it will not get there. So right now, it's just cooking very, very slow. Okay. If you see they release plenty of fat, you want to do what I do. Shut it off and let them wait. Okay? In the meantime, we're going to get this, uh, this puff going. Uh, okay? Let's let the zucchini cook on minimum. And uh, let's get Ryan uh, to tell us a little bit what's going on in that farm. Ciao, hey. Daniele. How are you doing? Thomas. Great video hey. so far. How are you? Wonderful. It's a little hot out here, so excuse the sweat, but... Uh, <laughs> Is it hot or what? <laughs> yes, absolutely. We had, a, had a great time. Us. What can you show us in the farm, Ryan? We're going to walk around a little bit. You know, sometimes people say, you know, do you guys really have a farm? Are you guys really organic? <laughs> can you please show us how organic we are? Absolutely. So let me flip the camera around, and um, we're here now to... To show you a little bit about what we're doing all oh, the margarita pizzas there's all your basil there there's my beautiful wife in the background Whoa. so the the greens that we're about to do in a little bit came from here these are mustard greens and if you notice down half of the row has already been trimmed that was for all the kits we trimmed about 30 feet for all of the, the kits that uh, we did. It was very successful. I do thank you, everybody that bought a salad. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, here's a couple other things that are coming up. We have about six varieties of heirloom tomatoes. Okay. They'll be coming up pretty soon. And we're just walking down the rows now and uh, see a little bit of uh, what we got going on. Here's some more of the greens that we did last week. Um, Come around here, we have coming up uh, carrots, celery, and lemongrass. Then we have a little little fun with some uh, eggplants. Goji berry coming along pretty nice. And then um, we have a little fun here coming up here, coming towards the winter. We've already planted in this bed here, four foot by eight foot, a bunch of broccoli rob. Daniele wanted to do a pasta, so we ended up putting some broccoli rob in. So we have a bunch of broccoli rob in here, and we have a ton of Roman zucchini coming in. So that's coming up soon. This is the Roman zucchini. So all these zucchini here, if you're looking down here, there you go. There they are with the flowers still attached. Looks great, Ryan. My God. So we're having a lot of fun here. Um, if you notice the empty rows here, those are some new rows that are going to go in. We have a purple okra, uh, kale that's going to go over the winter, um, quite a few Roma tomatoes that are variegated, and we're going to have fun with all that. Uh, I believe we have a couple other things yet. I haven't decided on collard greens or some melons or watermelons. It'll be a late fall harvest, but uh, we'll talk about that more with Daniele and figure out what kind of menu items we can create. I love it, man. Listen, I see a table set up over there. Are you going to show us something? Yes, I'm going to show you the salad that we created. I'm going to hand the phone over to my lovely wife, and she's going to video me. Yes. All right. Tell the people <laughs> how to make the salad. Yes. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was going to be the only one. Go for it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I All have right. So, beer. What is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in the I'm trying, trying, the trying to keep cool one way or another. But um, everybody uh, that bought a salad. Family with you? Uh, Shiles around here somewhere. He's probably in the pool. <laughs> I don't see him. I think he's he's done for today. Cam says to bring him some blossoms. <laughs> Someone said nice dance moves. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cam right. says for you to bring him some blossoms. You got it. 
<laughs> so what we have here, here's the kit that, that we all purchased here, which is uh, the mustard greens. I've already done the favor. These are the mustard greens, but it's been so hot. I pulled them, but they've already wilted a little bit. With mustard greens, you want to pull that stem out. That stem okay, is, Ryan, a, is pretty bitter sure and pretty spicy. Make so, sure you go slow because people have to follow you. Sure. Okay, so here's the greens. Here's the three different ingredients. It's a very, very, very simple salad. Um, kind of took this recipe and expanded on it from another friend of mine. Um, the idea here, just like with Italian cooking, everything is very simple, just with good, clean, fresh ingredients. So the greens go in a mixing bowl, and everybody that got the greens got a pair of gloves, and you're going to see why. So I put my gloves on, and the dressing is a very simple dressing. It is anchovy, salt, pepper, and extra virgin olive oil with a little bit of lemon zest. So all we're going to do is we're going to pour that into the container with the greens. Now, this is the most important part. That dressing has to be really, like, rubbed into the salad. you got to squeeze those greens. The idea is you're going to get that, those greens to release some of their liquid, and that's going to create a little more dressing. So that squeezing will also get the spiciness away from the mustard greens so it'll calm it down a little bit so now that i've squeezed them see that they're now a little bit translucent and almost look a little bruised but that's all you got to do is squeeze that lettuce okay now i'm going to put you know half in the little bowl you know just a little salad Put half in the other little bowl. Okay, now done with the gloves. And the rest is going to be garnished. So we have some uh, toasted sliced almonds. We're going to pour on top. More almonds on top. And a little bit of shaved Parmesan. If you like, Salt and pepper, if you'd like. I think it's just fine the way it is. But if you'd like a little salt and pepper, feel free. But that's pretty much it. Very simple, little light, clean, easy salad with the uh, Green Wave mustard greens. Ryan, wait, wait, it, the salad looks fantastic. And I tasted it, and it's really amazing. And uh, I mean, uh, Christina told me it's one of the best salads she ever had. Uh, when do you think it's going to be available? and no production where people can purchase a Chipo Divino. So we'll have, as of uh, tomorrow, we'll start bringing in probably about five to 10 salads a day and they'll be available in the cold case. Um, that should go through the winter. It's a very cold, hardy vegetable. We, so the, these greens will go through the winter as long as I take care of them, they will regrow. Um, we do have covers. So hopefully these two rows, if the demand is enough, we'll plant more. Um, as you can see, I have some, I have a planter, a seed planter here, um, that I'm getting ready to throw some more seed down already. So we'll be prepared. If, if you all think you like it, if you send some messages at Chibo Divino and, uh, let us know what you think, we'll put more seed down and put some more vegetables going. You can't, can't get any fresher than that. The, nope. the place looks gorgeous, but now we want to see something beautiful. We want to see Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Michelle right Hi. here. <laughs> oh, where is she? I don't see her. There she is. <laughs> There's the beautiful wife. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't see her. Oh, oh, you didn't see her? No. There we go. No. Ah, hey. Hey, Michelle. Hi. There we go. <laughs> ciao. Ciao, ciao. I miss y'all. Bye, right, guys. We love you. Thank you very much. Ryan, looks love great. You. Keep going, my Thank you so you much. We're going to continue Thank watching. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy the show, guys. Thank you. Ciao. 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 All right. Ciao. <laughs> ciao. Hey, ciao. Brian, perfect timing. 20 minutes. It's 35. I'm going to be 20 minutes. Okay, let's pump a little bit of the fire on the water. Okay? Look at this. So now, this is as much as you want to go. 
with the uh, with the zucchini they have to cook slowly okay what am i going to show you next all right with the guanciale is exactly what you have to do with the zucchini okay so once the zucchini cooks a little bit you can see that it's a little cooked you see that okay from this point on you do the same thing that i'm going to show you with the guanciale okay and by the way if you have any questions or if you want to do if you want to have the recipe of uh, step by step send us an email the recipe is done we'll send it to you all right so let's go back to the one challenge this baby is already pretty much spitting all the all the uh, fat water is almost boiling at this point since uh, we have a very little time we're gonna go ahead and excuse the noise, please. And uh, I'm not doing something else. It's the one that uh, is buried. Okay. There. So someone said I have a uh, uh, a lot of liquid fat. What do I do? No, no, no. Keep it. Keep it. Oh my God, beautiful. No, 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 no. Keep the liquid fat. Whatever fat you have in the pan is going to help later. You'll see. Lisa keeps eating all the meat. What's that? Lisa keeps eating all the meat. Ziti. Lisa keeps eating the meat. Oh no, Lisa, come on. Man. And then someone said, should the zucchini have brown? Ours is cooked, but not brown. They're cooked either way. They don't have to be brown. Brown doesn't mean brown. So as long as they're cooked, Give me about 15 minutes, okay? I didn't low it. As long as they spill a little bit of the water, they're gonna be okay. Oh, Liz says you need a YouTube channel. You have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody, please tell me if you have the, past, the water boiling before I put the pasta in. Tell me. Does everybody have the, boil, the water boiling? Everyone? Everyone, hello? I'm sorry. Anybody responding? Water boiling? They're eating the meat. Stop eating the meat. <laughs> Is the water boiling? Not yet, not yet. Water's oh. not boiling. See, I, I can smell the laurel. Not boiling. Water's not boiling. Pump it, pump it up, cover it. Whatever you can Got do. a couple of yeses. Okay, a couple of yeses. So water has to be like this. Come on, can you get it? Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Okay. Yes, water boiling, pasta in the middle, pasta out. That's it. Push it in, the way the fire won't burn. The How way. much pasta are we making? Well, um, don't put the whole package, put three quarters of it. Three quarter we package. boil it, we boil it. <laughs> if you put the whole package, it's okay, you can save the rest, okay? And boil it. Oh, good, good, dump it, dump the spaghetti inside. So slowly push all the spaghetti in there. From now to the time we put it over here, we got eight minutes. Okay, so set your watch. I hope you have a Swiss watch. So set your watch. There we go. All the pasta is in. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Move it a little bit. Don't go too nuts. I just want to make sure that the pasta doesn't stick which it shouldn't because the water is boiling. If the water wouldn't be boiling, then it would stick probably. So anyway, this is it. I put no salt in there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so now at this point, since everybody's asking me, I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Put it, not that much, just put a teaspoon, just a teaspoon. So what the salt is going to do is going to accelerate the boiling of the water so, bada bing, bada bing. Okay, 647. Teresa I, Join gets a high. Teresa who? Teresa Chiba, Teresa. I don't know any Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. Ciao, Teresa. <laughs> Our life wouldn't be the same without Teresa. And I want to say hi to everybody. I want to say hi to Sadina and beautiful Isabella. I want to say hi to Ellen and uh, Alicia. I want to say hi to Vince, my friend Vince Mon, you know, close to Liz. Liz. Oh, Did you salt the oh. water before they put the pasta Brandon in or after? And Lisa. 
Did you salt the, the salt the water before or after the pasta? No, after. After. Jacobi's. Who are they? Mr. and Mrs. Jacobi, Julian Rob. All right. Pasta's doing great. Uh, can, please, can you please let me know if everybody's got the pasta into the water before I move on? Because I can slow down. Come along. Can you see that? Can you see all the fun? Can you see all the fun? Goodwill hunting. All right. Off. Follow me. Here's what we do now. Get the eggs. Eggs. Egg number one. Are you with me? Boom. Break it. Boom. Oops. Lost it. Pick it up. Boom. Egg yolk. Egg number two. Boom. Boom. Yolk. Egg, I am, I am sweating now. Egg number three. Some Boom. Said. Boom. I'm just picking up the yolk. Then I can slow down. No problem. Over there. Egg number four. Sadira, you have to do egg number five. I know that. Can you repeat about the salt in the water with the spaghetti? After a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes. All right. Here we go. Boom. Yes? Yes. Now, um, what we want to do on this baby is, once you got the eggs in there, crack a little fresh pepper. That's it. And then get your uh, pecorino that's been provided. So this is yolks only, right? Oh, yolks only. No white. Why no white? Because if I put the white, it's going to be a frittata. And we don't wear an omelette. We're not doing an omelette. We're doing a carbonara. So, bada boom, bada bim. Okay. Have you noticed I put no salt? You want the white? The pecorino has already got salt. So, do this. Start mixing it. And here is the secret. Please. I'm not sure it's the secret. You scoop the yellow. Get a little bit of the water from the pasta, dump it in there, okay? And then keep mixing. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, you know, what we're trying to reach is this. You see that? Okay, now you need to slow down this a little bit and, and repeat a little bit. No worries. Get the egg yolk, put it in a, in a, in a little bowl, a little bit of cracked pepper, the pecorino, Half of what, I, what has been provided to you. Half. Greater than that. Let me show you. I'm going to put a little more. Okay? How much cheese? Oh, half. Half of the cheese that has been provided. The rest will go on top of the carbonara once we play it. Okay? Mix it. Put a little bit, a little bit of the pasta water. Okay? Look at that. Not that much. You see? A little bit. Boom. And keep mixing. And you're using only the yolk, right? Only the yolk. Okay, we want to get to this point. All right, yes. Let it sit. That's all we did. That's all we do. That's it. We don't do anything else. That's all we do. Just control the pasta. Beautiful. I got about three more minutes before the pasta is out. Make sure you get the creaminess. Of the, okay. Is it too liquid? If it is, if it's too liquid, all you have to do is put a little bit more pecorino. Of the piece that's been provided to you, this is what I have left. And this is going to be on top of the carbonara when the carbonara, when the carbonara is done and plate it. Please note. Is there any parsley here? No. You want to put some herbs? Fresh mint is what I suggest. Actually, what I recommend fresh mint is if you do the carbonara with the with the uh, zucchini. There, you can put a little bit of fresh mint. You know, it makes it a little bit fresher, a little bit. This is going to smell great. Okay? Do you see what happens here? You see what I got? Okay, this is a little cream that I'm going to need for the carbonara because... 
Then there is another secret. Finally grated with the cheese or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Just grate it. No, it doesn't matter. All right. So, here's what we have. Pasta off. I like to leave the pasta um, in the water for one minute before, before I put it up. Just because I want the pasta to finish it. It's going to be al dente if you leave it on uh, just one minute swimming in there. In the meantime, something extremely important extremely important. Uh, show us how it looks, the consistency. The consistency of the... See that? Because this has to do the cremina. We call it cremina in Italian. You know, which is the little cream that makes the carbonara without the heavy cream, please, okay? Thank you. So at this point, this will be poured in the pasta with the zucchini, you know, if you want the vegetarian one. Uh, yeah, put some fresh mint. You'll see that it's going to change your life. Otherwise, in this... You know, for this, if you notice, And I don't want to do that. I have to create a little bit of cream, not an omelette. So the little uh, baba bean that I use, I'm going to leave it in there because if I need more water, I want to be able to do it. So How many minutes on the pasta? Eight minutes. And do you use all the cheese? No, half of it. Because the other half is going to be on top of the carbonara. So you can get the pasta now. And put it in there. Don't worry about the water that goes in there. All right. And then we can just mix it. Oh, by the way, you can do it now. Okay, I'm going to dig on the video froze, so okay. they didn't get to see it. Go back to it. We'll keep the yolks. Okay, I did it before. Okay, I transferred the pasta into the guanciale. You see that? Yes? Now, pasta and guanciale are together. I'm keeping the pasta water because I might need it. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the pan off the fire because if I leave the pan out there, this is still hot, I'm going to make a frittata. That's not what I want to do. So at this point, once I have this, I'm just going to pour it over here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to stop you. Um, because, unfortunately, it froze. So you're going to have to you're gonna have to go backwards because you had the meat in the pan. Okay. Now I put the pasta with the meat. And then... I put the mix of the eggs and pecorino together. I'm looking at it, it's a little tight, so I'm gonna put a little bit of water from the pasta, just a little bit, and I keep on doing what I was doing. Boom, 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 boom. Can you hear that noise? Can you hear that noise? That's the noise. That's the perfect noise for the carbonara. Okay. You want to see what I'm looking at, camera woman? You see that? You see that little cream? This is what we're looking for, okay? Because the pan, look at that. Did you leave all the fat That's, in the pan? Yes, absolutely. That's what makes the deal. That's what that makes the difference, okay? All right. Off the fire. The pan is warm, but it's not piping hot. So off the fire. So at this point, what I do is I get a plate. Okay, and I plate it. I don't want 
little too much. Okay. And on top, guess what? I'm gonna do a little bit more pecorino. Oh gosh, yes. Oh yes. And a little more. Um, Liz said I have the noodles on top of the zucchini. Uh, please repeat where the eggs go. The eggs go. Once you have the zucchini and the pasta together and you mix everything up, move it out of the fire, then put the eggs mixture with the pecorino. And just move it and move it and move it. If you need to, because it dries up and you see drying up, just add a little bit of pasta water at a time. You're supposed to have this. Can you see this? The little cream, okay? There is no cream in the carbonara. You create the cream with egg yolk and pecorino. So, boom! Carbonara. So we've got about three, four minutes. Let's get more questions. Questions, please. Make sure all the vegetarian. Yes, vegetarians, you have questions? Vegetarians, no. Anyone? So we want to get a picture to hashtag Chivalina. Yes, please do. And I want to remind you, in two weeks, Banfi Wines, Porchetta. How to make the perfect Porchetta. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, this is uh, one of the most famous uh, Italian recipes created by American soldiers. Um, my favorite place in Rome is called Da Francesco. And uh, I have to tell you, it's probably the best carbonara I've ever had. You can change the pasta if you like. Instead of spaghetti, you can use penne or mezze maniche, which is the half of rigatoni. Um, in Rome, most of the restaurants make tonnarelli. Tonnarelli are fresh pasta, fresh noodles. They're like square spaghetti. You know, they're spaghetti, but they, if you look on the side, they're a little bit square. You know, they're really good. Uh, where does the zucchini go? The zucchini goes in the mix. You have to saute everything with the pasta. So you do the same thing that I showed you with the uh, with, uh, carbonara, and then boom, you put the, the zucchini instead of the flat shot. No, I gotta taste this baby. Susan says, thank you, they're gonna eat now. TX event says it's delicious. No, no, no. Carbonara with no cream, please, no cream. This is amazing. Someone's asking where's the zucchini? That was a, it's a different recipe. Yeah, the zucchini recipe is the other recipe for Tordici. The zucchini was like, a, let's imagine this is the one child. You mix the pasta to it, and then you put the mix of uh, um, egg yolk and uh, pecorino. And you mix it the same way that we did the regular carbonara. If it looks a little dry, just put a little bit of pasta water, keep mixing it, and you're gonna have the same result, but instead of the guanciale, you have the zucchini. And that's the vegetarian carbonara. Liz, yes? Liz, you got it? Where's Liz? No, very good. Well, I want to thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please, you know, email us. I gotta eat this. This is amazing. <laughs> it came out really good. So I'll see you in two weeks. Um, Bumpy wines and uh, uh, porchetta. Liz said thank you. It's amazing. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. From you, it's a great compliment. I love you. Thank you all very much. See you in two weeks. Ciao. Grazie.